man, it's like somebody just pulled the air out of the room. You know, it wasn't was like, just one; it was every <laughs> single yeah. person moaning. Yeah, I think people look at budgeting as something that's restrictive, and so what we what I like to do is try to change people's mindset on that, and that teach them budgeting is actually very free. Welcome, Charles and Angela. So you guys are in business together and it sounds like you've had some, some challenges and you're married again. So tell me how did, <laughs> what challenges happened? Cause I will tell you in our second year of business, and I've shared this publicly many times, and we almost, the business and everything almost broke our marriage. The only reason we did not uh, divorce at the time is because we have way too much debt. And I was like, how the <laughs> heck are we going to separate this? Uh, I'm, uh, thank God for debt. That's the only one time I've ever heard that. So, <laughs> give us some both highs and lows. You know, I don't want you to go all in the lows, but but how did you get here today? Well, I think you know, to kind of start off. It's in any business, any relationship, you're going to have your challenges. It's just a matter of overcoming those. Are you going to focus on the challenges themselves? Or are you going to focus on the victory that is possible ahead? As we were talking even before the show, you know, the most important thing is you know the foundation what you're building so what is your marriage based on what is your business based on is it is it based is it founded on christ or is it founded on your own efforts your own work so first of all just being having yourself together spiritually and that was i think one of our issues where we struggled in business we struggle in our marriage you know uh, based on statistics 75 percent of divorces it depends on where you look at it are because of financial problems and 70 percent of prayer requests in the church are either for health or finances so so regardless yeah. of where you're at in the church, in the world, over here, over there, you know, finances play a big part, you know, not only our lives, but also our relationships as well, too. So having healthy finances, I think, is a very important factor to have. One thing I like to share with people, you know, when you start to talk out about if you're doing any type of financial advising or we're doing our financial classes or whatever they may be, is that most of the time, I don't think people have a money making problem they have a money spending problem so yep. it's a matter of you know, getting getting those things in orders and for us you know i was in the nightclub business um had partners in the businesses and was making you know more money in a month than most people make in a year but we we're still going into debt because we we're hyper consumers yeah. now we're buying yep. and say, now we can have three cars four cars now we can have more expensive cars now we can have a bigger house you know all this this and that and the clothes and the fancy shoes and right. you, know, you just buy 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 and as you make more money, your credit gets more extended. So you become more in debt, more enslaved. And it's just, you know, a never ending cycle. You know, that's part of the problem, I think, with our society, as we were talking earlier before the show as well, too. You know, you go to college, first thing I did is got a student loan. So before yeah. I stepped into the classroom, I was already in debt. Then I went and bought my books, the bookstore, and they gave me an application for a college credit card. And within a month, that was maxed out. And I was even in more debt. You know, and you haven't even got through your first month of school. And you know, you become part of that system. Um, yeah. So you know, being able to kind of extract yourself from that system. And that was the thing for us after we went through bankruptcy, you know, we lost everything, we lost our house, we lost our car. We didn't have jobs. We didn't have a place to live. Our daughter was less than a year old. We had to move into Angela's parents' basement and couldn't even buy diapers. So they basically were supporting us. We couldn't have a bank account because the IRS and the city of Arizona, or the state of Arizona had seized my bank account. So I couldn't put money in the bank. So even coming out of bankruptcy, we still had six figures of debt because we had IRS back payments. I should say I did. I had IRS back yeah. payments. And I still had student loans I had to pay off. So, you know, most of the time you come out of bankruptcy, you're on a level playing field. I was still underwater, you know, so coming through that and coming out of that, you know, I think when we're teaching finances to people, we, we have, a compassion for people that are in that yeah. situation. Sometimes people say, we don't know what I'm going through. You know, I just lost my job or I just lost this. And so I ask people, do you have a place to live? They're like, yeah. I said, well, you had more than I had. You know, do you have a bank right, account? Right. More than I had, you know, you got any, you know, any of those type of things. I mean, we came from underwater and we were able to do it. And the main thing that we did the second time was like, we got to figure out how to do this, what the word of God has to say about this. Because, yeah. you know, we're going to church, but we were really just kind of warming the pews, weren't tithing, weren't doing offerings, you know, the plate would go by, I'd throw some money in it, you know, it wasn't thought out, it wasn't prayed over. And so we just thought, we got to get this right this time. So we yeah. found a couple of Creflo Dollar Ministries, we plugged in, we became partners. Um, we started learning what the word of God had to say about you know how to handle your finances 
and started to exercise those in our life and it changed everything. You know, so we went from having nothing to having one house, two houses, three houses, then, you know, rebuilding everything. And the most important part about that really was doing it from a perspective of not going into debt again. And coming yeah. out of it, we did have some debt, but we were able at, you know, one point to finally become completely debt free. And, you know, sometimes I know financial advisors say, hey, there's good debt. You know, you can leverage this stuff. And we still yeah. do have some investment properties where, you know, they're cash flowing. They pay the mortgage, they pay the property manager, they pay everything. They're cash flowing and we're making money on it. You know, would that be considered good debt? Well, yeah. You know, if I had a hundred of those properties, would that be good? Probably so. You know, but if yeah. you have the choice to have no debt or some debt, what would you rather have? I think there's a difference too. Like uh, I think about, pro I, I'm a big proponent of this thing called profit first, right? It's all percentage based and, and making sure you're, you as the business owner are paying yourself and you're allocating tax money for your business to the IRS, right? Cause it's theirs anyway, but most business owners don't even realize it. And thinking about that idea of good debt versus bad debt, right? A lot of the whole economic system, and, and this is something I've thought about a lot, is the financial system is built on us consuming right mm -hmm. uh, as much as you consume that shows the health of the economy health quote unquote right more and more you consume the the healthier the economy is however if you keep eating fast food all day long you will grow right <laughs> and then guess guess, yeah. guess what will happen they will put you on medication you become type 2 diabetic or, or more and then you're on insulin and all the other stuff i think our economy is on a downward spiral in a lot of ways because we've been saying growth is about this and, and it's all about spending and, and, and all of that. And I'm like, that's not healthy. And our economy is not healthy. And sometimes that is good. Sometimes that is bad. But a lot of times we can't tell the difference between it and the banks love that we don't know and they don't want to teach us as, as st students that about that system. And so I've considered myself a, a teacher, specifically younger people, business owners of how do you leverage that wisely because it's almost like a, a slavery thing. But Jesus talks a lot about, you know, money. Right. He says a lot about that stuff. And I'm like, hmm, it's interesting that we just gloss over it uh, a lot. And I love the model of the tithe model because 10% goes to God. And then there's a Richest Man in Babylon book that I, I like. Um, and he says one of his rules is 10% of all you earn is for you to keep. I was like, that's yeah. the tithe model, right? So we should be saving more and then in living off of like 60% or whatever. But our world is saying, well, you need this new house or this and that. And, and I think that that's not healthy. It's not even fulfilling. So how do you teach your kids on this kind of stuff? Well, going back to what you're just saying, you know, breaking it down somewhat as a percentage, you know, first you have, you have the tithe, 10%, very, very basic. Yep, yep. Next one is what you just mentioned as well too, paying yourself, you know, and investing. Mm -hmm. So whether, you know, it's original, that's starting off, it's more of a savings account. Then you start getting into retirement accounts, that type of stuff. With our daughter, we started her at eight years old as the employee of our corporation and paying the income tax. So yeah. in doing that, we set her up with 401ks, savings accounts, all those things. And from the very beginning, she didn't really know any difference. This is how you do it. <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. put, you put 10% in church or whatever foundation ministry. You put another 10% on wow. your investment accounts and then you have, you know, the remaining to spend and like whatever you want to purchase. So, and in teaching adults, it's kind of the same thing because a lot of times when they haven't been taught that through growing up or in school or whatever, they've got to be taught the same thing. For us, you know, coming out of having nothing, you know, barely being able to make it, it was starting off by just getting something couldn't be 10%. You know, we didn't have 10%. So yeah. we just didn't have that much money. So what I like to teach people, if, if you're really in that situation, just do something. If you give a dollar to the church, give a dollar. If you put a dollar in a savings account, put a dollar. Because what you're doing is you're starting to establish those mindsets and you're starting to build diligence and consistency on that. And over time, you'll be able to start increasing those to get those to some kind of the common threshold that most financial advisors or people who are, you know, teaching on finances will, you know, some of those variable breakdowns. I like that. Like it's, it's a, almost like exercise or mm -hmm. a, a spiritual practice, right? Yeah. Uh, if you read, like, you know, read your Bible once a day, 
uh, it becomes a habit, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of like budgeting. And, and I've, I've don't like the word budgeting. It sounds restrictive, but like, how do you better manage cash flow like a millionaire? We are working in a environment that, you know, he supplies the millions, right? So I don't know why we're in, in poverty mindset a lot of times, but I, I do think a lot in the, the financial services world, I'm a safe money guy. Savings for me is different than investing. And so I really want people to build that safety percentage base. So that way, if, if an emergency happens, it's not in their, their safe money is not in um, 401k when they need a, a tire blown out or something like that. And and it's all percentages. But as we grow, $1,000 uh, percentage base, 10%, right? It's not that big, but $1,000 of a million or 10% or of a million, just as amazing as we think in percentages versus just this amount needs to go here or this. It's all and compound so, interest. Yeah. Uh, and as you were saying before, um, you know, your budgeting, and I know Amanda came out and had to actually readdress the, I hate budgeting. <laughs> well, we understand that, you know, you don't hate budgeting, but it's a necessary tool in your arsenal in order to have increase. Charles designing this curriculum was students in our class kept saying, Oh man, it's like somebody just pulled the air out of the room. You know? It wasn't just <laughs> one, it was every single <laughs> yeah. person. Money. Yeah. I think people look at budgeting as something that's restrictive. And so what we what I like to do is try to change people's mindset on that and that teaching that budgeting is actually very free. Because yeah. once you have a budget in place and you're following that, it's freeing to know at the third week of the month, in the month, hey, you know what? I had enough money versus if you don't have any budget and you get to the third week and you go, Oh crap, I'm out of money. I can't pay my bills, I can't pay my rent or whatever. That to me is a lot more restrictive than knowing that, hey, I got everything accomplished. And I think from, you know, when people are just starting out, they don't have investments, um, they're not doing any type of savings, that a budget's really pretty critical to be able to get yeah. a plan or to get that to come to place. You know, once you get to a place, I mean, me and Angela now, where we're at, I mean, you know, this is all glory to God. I can walk into a store and buy anything I want and really not think about the price and never even look at the price sometimes. Yeah. You know, yeah. We have everything that we want, the types of cars, the types of house, whatever. Once again, I give all the glory to God. But I don't have to operate on a budget like I used to. I still have the major yeah. to keep my discipline in places as far as my investing, my giving, I track all my giving, I plan all my giving out every month before I'm gonna even do it. And then I pray over it, I get direction on what, you know, who I'm gonna to give to. We have we're partners with nine different ministries, so the amounts will change on some of that from place, from ministry to ministry. But it still gives me that discipline of having yeah. a budget in place to have just the guidelines of budget. I don't have to track my grocery store, I don't have to track you know, some of that type of thing, but my major components I still do budget and track and have a plan for it's like you're saying it's like you know exercise in the same way it's like yeah. you can't just exercise for january and february you don't do the rest of the 10 months you still got to go exercise those other 10 months as well too so you know once you come out of a place where you're no longer in debt and you have cash i don't think you just throw the budget out the window you just kind of re-implement how you handle that I yeah we that. we've thought about that too a lot of um like it, i think jeff bezos probably doesn't budget probably does not like you know make sure that he doesn't spend uh all this money at costco or i don't know whatever it is i don't know <laughs> whatever his bills are he, he's not really looking at that but i bet you he has a team of people that help him manage his cash flow he ha and i bet you he does and he's probably got more people on his team just managing that than we have on our staff, right? You know, and, and, you know, just just thinking. That's the thing that I think budgeting or whatever. It's a managing cash flow like a millionaire. It's like giving yeah. your dollar jobs, uh, doing all that. It's not restrictive. It just is almost from a. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, point. and if you're saying Bezos didn't start here, he started mm -hmm. here, having yeah. to work his way. But again, like with your exercise, once you just go out and walk down the street. And then once you walk down the street, you're gonna, you keep doing that. And then a week later, you're like, hey, I'm gonna go the second block. And then you walk the second block. And then as you walk the second block, then maybe the third, and then you start to build your immune and your faith to wanna go further. And so that's the same way in the budget. But if you don't get off the couch and get outside and at least walk to the mailbox or down the street, yep. it's the same thing. You're, you will stagnate your growth or where you wanna be in life.
Well, if you're using that analogy of exercising, if you're 200 pounds overweight, it's going to take a lot more work to get to your ideal weight. Once you get to your ideal weight, it's very easy to maintain it. Yep. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to do what you had to do to lose that 200 pounds. So it's kind of the same thing with finances. Once you get to a place where, you know, what, you've reached your goals, you're out of debt, whatever it may be, it's much easier to maintain that consistency and that diligence than it is when you're trying to dig your way out of debt. <laughs> you know, you're just trying to pay the rent, whatever it may be. So how do you guys educate your, your kids? Because I know you do a lot with kids education and um, for generations. The first thing is God is your source, not a relative, not a someone who has money. And once you plug in to mm -hmm. the source, those things will start to come to you. And so we like to talk about the creation of what Charles put together for Money Mike is in his leaves, tithe, save, invest, give. These are very mm -hmm. simple principles that govern increase, financial increase. So we like to um, liken them unto seeds. If you plant the seed mm -hmm. and you operate and you water and you let that seed grow, it will produce fruits that you can then leave an inheritance for your children's children. Well, how does that start? It starts in the womb. Parents yeah. reading to their children, <laughs> planting the seeds when they're young, reading these simple principles that govern increase. And so, you know, when Charles did his 10 week financial courses, he basically wrapped his curriculum, took a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of prayer for each different class and wrapped the IP around what was, you know, what parents were getting breakthrough in. Each yeah, the children's books that we've done is, is really, it's just the, the 10 week financial class, but it's done in very simple terms, obviously. Mm -hmm. So it's our age groups two to eight. So it's got to be easy The you know, each page is very short. It's more based on illustrations, but we do have a glossary of terms in each book that have all the scriptures that are related to each page and then all the financial terms as well, too. The whole reason we want to do this was not so a parent could just hand their kid a book and say, go in your bedroom and read this and go to sleep. It was for it to be a tool for the parent to be able to interact and teach the children. So that there's yeah. community between them. But and like I always say, Regardless of if you're the parent or child, the parents are going to learn something through this as well, too. Yeah. You know what the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing yeah. by the word of Christ. It's hearing, it's plural, it's over and over and over. So as you're reading to your kid or they're reading out loud to you, you're hearing it as well, too. It's just like meditating yeah. on scripture. So it's really important. And you know, one of the things that we've taught in our abundant life. Um, series two is leaving an inheritance to your children. You just mentioned that and it kind of sparked something in me is I think a lot of times now um, in society, you're seeing where parents are actually needing their kids to take care of them. And that's yeah. not the way as, as Christians, that's not the way that it should be. Yeah. You know, we're told in the world to leave an inheritance to your children's children. That means your kids and your grandkids. So if you yeah. be able to pass down two generations of inheritance, you got to have some dough, man. So yeah. how, how are we going to get to that point? And, you know, it goes back to some of the basics that we're talking about. But, you yeah. know, it's important for us, I think, not just to hand that down. Like you're talking about life insurance, you know, whatever investment accounts that you may have that you're going to pass on to your children. But the most important thing is teaching them how to do it themselves as well, too. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not they're just not sitting back waiting. Well, I wonder when my dad's going to die because then I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to be a trust funder. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's about I really don't need that. I know it's coming and it's just going to make it roll over bigger and bigger to the next generation. So it's kind of, the, you know, the old analogy, you teach a man how to fish, you know, you feed yeah. him for a lifetime instead of just giving him the fish to feed him the one meal. And that's what I think that's important that we do with our kids is teaching how them how to be self-sufficient in Christ, you know, and, and being able to be, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and, and investors and business owners and all the different elements that they can be and encouraging them in that as well yeah. too because so much now you know you hear about when you hear news it's like you know you're suppressed and you're not gonna be able to be a thing because of the color of your skin your nationality or whatever it may be you know all this garbage so when this stuff is coming out our kids it's like we have to be encouraging them you know you can do all things through christ you know you're the heir of abraham your blessing abraham is on yeah. your life teaching that stuff over and over and over getting them into making declarations so that they build themselves up and know who they are in Christ and going back to kind of where we very first started, what are we building, 
you know, our life on. Why are we building our businesses on? We're building them on Christ. You know, it's got to be the foundation. Like Dan was saying, God is our source. And I have to always teach people, you know, from a biblical perspective and looking at your finances that your paycheck ain't your source. If you're a business owner, your business ain't your source. Those are just revenue streams that God can get uh, money to you. We actually did a series, a 21 week series on uh, how to receive supernatural wealth in 21 different ways, backed up by over 200 scriptures on how you can get money, not even really related. I mean, job is a business is part of that, but there's all these different supernatural ways that you can get money if you just know those principles from the Bible. Yeah. And I want to go back to your wealth, wisdom, financial, because part three of your intro is smart, stable home base. So how yeah. do you define that? Yeah, I think you have to have a good foundation, right? And meaning not just it, your inv investments is different than savings for, for me. Uh, the home base is where you store your, your money and then deploy it, right? If, if I'm talking about finances, but my home base is also my, my house, right? The, the <laughs> disciplines that I'm um, doing in the not order, not normal times, right? Like the daily dinners, right? Uh, with my uh, family. Right. I'm also a caretaker of my mother-in-law. So I have, I have that uh, as well. But those are like the home base, the things that we do normally. But we don't spend our life on vacations. We go out. We go in and deploy those resources out. But we come back home mm -hmm. always, right? Mm -hmm. and, and But you have to have the disciplines of that. And, and what are those things that I'm teaching? Uh, mantras, I guess you will. Uh, there for your home base and, and deploying that money if it's in that way uh, every Sunday uh, we have we have family day uh, our four-year-old knows it's family day we're gonna go on an adventure right so, so yeah those are things that we do uh, Sunday is adventure day you know mm -hmm. and we, we found a uh, park uh, yesterday with his name almost his name was on the, the park I love uh, it. Yay. And I was, I was like, oh, look, there you go. He, he loved it. But, <laughs> but it's just like adventure days. Uh, and we don't stress about the money, but we also don't go spending it in uh, crazy places. We go to outdoor areas, right? Now, the other thing I was thinking about is uh, I do a lot with life insurance. I think the most spiritual product out there is life insurance when it comes <laughs> to any of that, because it's it literally is to protect widows and orphans. I was like, how much more spiritual of a product c could you think of? Like that, that's the point of it, right? I was like, hmm, that's what I want to make sure of is I will pass away. How am I going to make sure my son and my wife, who will be a widow at some point, uh, unless she dies first, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, um, but like, that's what, what is the legacy that I'm doing? And, and that's something I just, I think a lot about. So. Which is part of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. I love that you go on adventure day on Sundays. I think keeping that Sunday, that day of rest with your family is really important. What Charles used to do with our daughter was take her out on date night. And yep. so back then, as you know, now she's 24 and she's very successful in what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But um, he would take her like to Chuck E. Cheese or somewhere fun where they could engage together in games and, you know, she would dress up and get excited and he would pick her up and open her door and take her out. And it's so important for the father figure. And even if there are homes that don't have a father figure, just setting some time aside, being that, being the parent, you know, yeah. and loving on your child and whatever your love language is with your child. Like you said, you don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money. You can just go outside to the park and just spend, it's just that quality time together. Yeah. There's six different ways instead of- and, and we go for walks, like, you know, we just walk yeah. around. And and I've asked them, you know, like, how do you make money? You know, and, and I even told them like, you know, in order to get something, you, you have to provide value, right? And there's that's how money is 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 made i guess for you is you have to provide value to somebody else so what how are you going to provide value are you mm -hmm. going to mow the grass or you know he's like i'm four years old I, I, you know uh so then chores there was one point that uh that he, we said we asked him how do you make money and he's like well uh, you dig in the ground 
uh, and you'll find money and, <laughs> and then you put it in your computer and it doubles. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, where what? did you, where did you hear that? Cause that is definitely not what we do. And, and I'm pretty sure it, blocks. <laughs> n- number blocks, Minecraft, I think, or something. I was like, all right, we need to get off these Bitcoin videos that you're watching. <laughs> Um, but the funny thing was, this was, this was really interesting. So I, I, um, had a old shed, uh, in my backyard and, and we, we had it taken down, uh, and some actual homeless people, uh, we, we had them work it and get, get rid of it. Right. Uh, oh. paid them provide, okay. provided value. They okay. provided value to me and underneath the ground, we found pavers. Uh, we were going to replace the um, background or the yard. We were going to replace that and put a, a um, patio out there. But then under the gra- under the dirt was these pavers. And I was like, man, we just literally found a couple thousand dollars in the ground. I, I think maybe he was prophetic or something because he, <laughs> he found money in the ground. Um, well, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. See, that was it's the- just like that. It's... Well, that's one of the one of the twenty one supernatural ways that God can get resources in your hand is earthly resources. Yes. Whether it's yeah. gold, oil, diamonds, pavers, pavers. <laughs> pa- pavers. Awesome. I was like, I was like, pavers. awesome. Now we have it. That was just fun, and and it was like a teaching moment, and and realizing it, it a lot of that stuff happens in the movement, right? That's that's kind of why I think about the still method and what we created with the still method is the repetitions of what we do uh he sees that right when we we yeah yeah yeah. the sitting with the like like uh, our our thing is set your sights right Mm -hmm. so many people in in the financial world or in in life they don't even have goals their goal is to go to disney world i'm like well what what is your what is what's your plan what do you want to do so you have to set your sights, right? You have to figure out where that is, reverse engineer it. Um, and then that's the track, you're in and out, inspect your progress, look for 1% adjustments and live deliberately. Yeah. Um, live deliberately is the hardest part. But um, I want him to know that we are deliberate in the things that we have done and do. Are we uh, uber rich millionaires or billionaires? No, but wealth is not always money, in my opinion. Uh, we have we have put it down to just, oh, how much is in your account? But there's a lot of rich people who have failing marriages, uh, no connection to their kids, and I'm like, well, that's not that's not what I want. And yeah, it's full prosperity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what you were saying earlier of you know teaching your children the different ways that they provide value and earn and that's what our first book money is easy and as leaves is tied save invest give just teaching the simple principles like what do you need money for food and clothes and you know things to live you know how do you make that money well you can sell lemonade you know something homemade you can sell an old toy you know and, and things like that just to start getting kids thinking about how they can provide value giving is easy this is our second release and this is just the various ways you can give and how giving principles open up a spiritual increase that once you start operating in this miracles signs and wonders it's like a governing law that yeah. when you tap into it all of a sudden you know like he was saying the 21 supernatural ways which we're not limiting it to 21 because god's infinite yeah. and the various ways he can get money to you but it's like you tap open a window of heaven where god you know just can go oh yeah 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 you just like open the flow it's like a golden yeah. rock that just pours it's seed time and harvest yeah you know, yeah, yeah people, right. doesn't sow seed, guess what no harvest right you're not gonna have anything so you have to be taught you know how to give and you know, as children I think you automatically are, you know, mine, mine, don't take this, it's mine. Yeah, right. You don't yeah. have to teach a kid how to say it's mine, but you have to teach him on how to 
hey, you need to share, you need to give, you need to be a good boy. <laughs> you know, that type I feel of I feel like that's a lot of adults too, but <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Well, sure. sometimes they never grow up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the one of the fun things I remember, uh, it never never knowing what your kids are are hearing you do or, or say. I remember we were going to a, a Trader's World thing, and we were like, "Oh, you know, this is like an auction house," and you know, and and I told my wife, I said, "Don't pay full price for anything. You always like say that's too much, and and you negotiate, right? That's that's how those places work." And so he has like twelve bucks. Uh, and he's not a spender um, at all, but he but he had 12 bucks and, and he sees this little toy and uh, and the guy asked, how, how much is this? And this is when he was three uh, and he's like, uh, $4. And he puts it down and he says, uh, that's too much and starts walking away. And, uh, and then my wife's like, well, hey, wait, no. I was like, wait, how did he know that? I was like, oh, wait, we were talking about that in the front of the car. And uh, and so my wife goes back to him and says, go back and say, would you do three dollars? And uh, and so he goes back and says, will you, will you can I buy it for three dollars? And uh, and the guy's like, oh, OK. And so he basically saved 25 percent. Because of hearing. Of of hearing. Yeah. yeah. And then was, do, right? Yeah, he, impl he implemented and and yeah. he was the, the driver in that. And I was like, hmm, that's that was a, a money thing that he learned uh, all because of you know, the power of negotiating, I guess it was the, well, I don't know, who knows? Parents were discussing, you know? Again, it goes back to the home. It goes yeah. back to what are the parents talking about? What are you teaching your children? How are you raising your children? Yeah. What's coming out of your mouth? And that's a big thing that we teach about too in our Abundant Life show is watch what's coming out of your mouth because those are seeds. Yep. What you're thinking, what you're saying. Um, like you yeah. said, your children, they're so impressionable. They're going to take what you say and what you do and apply it to their own. Yeah. And so you got to navigate that. Well, life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's what the Bible says. So it comes down to, I tell people, are you going to speak life? Are you going to yep. speak death? You have a choice. Whichever one of those things you speak, that's what you're gonna you're gonna reap that harvest. We're just talking about seed time and harvest. You'll reap those things in your life as well too. So yeah, speak life, speak blessings, speak prosperity, speak health, speak all the goodness that you want to see, and that's what will manifest in your life. Which yeah. is what we named the books: Money is Easy, Giving is Easy, the third book, Saving is Easy, and the last one is Say No to Debt. Because what he kept hearing in class was, oh, money is so hard. Money is so hard. Yeah. And the first thing you got to break is that mindset. It's not yeah. hard. It's easy. And here's how it's easy. It's very, very simple. Just keep it simple. I think people yeah. like to overcomplicate. Like you were saying with the overweight person, you know, if they're 200 pounds, oh, well, it's too late. I'm already overweight. I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, just walk outside. That's all yeah. you got to, you know, and just build on that. What do they say? The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is right now. <laughs> right. And, and a lot of people will play the victim card and say, well, I, this or that like, well, budget just helps, uh, you know, and again, it's about having a, a life of freedom. Right. And, and sometimes we'll look at biblical principles and say, this is just putting us and rules right and i'm like well it's it's more about freedom because i i can look and say oh, i can do this or, or that uh and it's just uh having more freedom because someone else has taken it from me whether the banks or the debts or or whatever it's it's having those guardrails to help us have more more freedom i mean I, i'm pretty sure he knows what he's talking about so well um, and you know thank god for programs or government loans and things like that to help people and welfare. And if people, we always say, if you find yourself in that position, those are great bridges, mm -hmm. but you don't want to get stuck there. You want to cross that bridge. You want to leverage that to get you to that place so that you can start operating and just keeping it very, very simple. So I yeah. say yes, give. they're just, just, it, it will work. Every time it will work. 
and that that's the hard part of doing uh youtube videos and all of that so i'm like uh it's not that hard um it's percentage based and you just do those things and and you either um spend less make more uh that's you know that's pretty much it uh, where you allocate it, you know, we, we, there's another book I recommend called the ruthless elimination of hurry. Um, really like that because we're so busy in stuff that the, the consumers world is saying, well, you need this, you need Disney plus and you need this and that. And we aren't, we're, we're not, we're so hurried that we're not back and saying, what is, what is wealth to me? Right. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm hoping my son, uh, learns from you guys and others that wealth is so much more than money. Uh, it is helpful. Um, but Jesus had a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of relationship, uh, all of that. And that's what I'm hoping as we help people in wealth, wisdom, financial it's that's why wealth and financial someone told me well why are you saying wealth and financial isn't it the same word pretty much i'm like no <laughs> right yeah um, any any closing marks that you want to want to make sure our audience knows about well yeah i would say what's next money is easy <laughs> Just change, change the way you look at it you know get get some help from uh, somebody who's going to give you not just wealth management, but something that's going to have some biblical yeah. foundation behind it. I mean, yeah. that's kind of how we started off. Um, and like we were just talking about, just take one step at a time. It's, it's not yeah. that difficult, but you do have to make an effort to start somewhere and get started and going and um, just make just make that first choice to say, I'm going to make a difference because it truly yeah. will change your life. Okay. And then how about wealth, wisdom, financial? What's next for you guys? Yeah, really, uh, I see our business as, you know, more and more people are going into business ownership, uh, mm -hmm. not because they um, want to, it's just because that's the way the world is going. You know, they're, they're private uh, contractors uh, and all of that. So uh, we have created a uh, PDF. If you go to our website or, or want to learn more, of course, go to look up wealth wisdom financial and you'll find us on YouTube on, on the, all the socials. Um, I, I tell everybody question everything, right? Um, like really on question your 401k question, all of the products, right? Um, because it's really, they, they're supposed to be there to build, um, you up, not just somebody else right uh and so go there there's a special report if you go on our website wealthwisdomfp.com uh there's a special report that we have it's called uh five simple steps to secure your financial future outside the w2 um i remember being in my men's group uh just recently and they were like yeah um i have a pension i have this my company does this match I was like, I am the company. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have a company match, um, you know, and, and just thinking about how do we build a stable foundation in a world that's very shaky right now. At least it feels like it. Um, that's, that's where I really want to help people uh, overcome that. So go to wealthwisdomfp.com and you'll, you'll find me. I love that. I love oh. that you're, about teaching people how to be independent contractors. We're firm believers in that and teaching people how to uh, be not self-sufficient, God-sufficient first, but then being able to be their own business. You know? Yeah. So, yay. <laughs> I think uh, there's so many people that we don't even realize it. Uh, a lot of people think it's easy to go into business ownership until they've been in it a couple of years. Uh, majority of businesses fail. Uh, and it's, it's kind of like marriages. Like they go into it thinking it's going to be easy. And I'm like, mm, yeah, just give it a couple of years. Uh, and if you don't have the community and the support around you, that's why the, the church, big C church is really important, uh, to build that, the support system. So 
uh, I just want to be a support system for others. That's awesome. Cool. And then so well, for us, you could go to toddworldwide.org and all of our resources are there. All of our, um, you know, our books, which will direct you to moneymikeandthegang.com with our books. You know, we've just released our second book, which is Giving is Easy. Um, they have both become number one sellers on Amazon, nice. which we're super excited about. Um, and then next for us is releasing the third book, which is Saving is Easy, which we'll do that in a few months. And then the fourth book in the series is Say No to Debt. But in the meantime, we're working on some animation and, you know, building the brand. Um, and so it's becoming really fun. It's what's what's the website again? Money, Mike and the gang dot com. So awesome. Well, uh, Charles and Angela, thanks uh, for being here. Uh, I'm excited to see where the impact this is going to have, not just now, but, you know, 30 years from now, these, these four year olds that are reading these books and and the impact that that has that you guys will never actually know. Uh, and so uh, keep going, keep educating, giving these parents the tools because we need them. Thank uh, you. And you too, Brandon, you and your wife, Amanda, and your, and your household and your mother-in-law. So we just pray blessing over you and your household and that you and your family would increase more and more and that the Lord would just surprise you with something amazing because you are helping a community of people that he has assigned you to do. So we're in agreement with your increased promotion and in all things heavenly to bust open into your house in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Awesome.